So actually, when I was really, really young, this is what uh, like my friends said about me, that I was too dumb to talk simply because I speak with a severe stutter. And uh, I mean, those are the kinds of crazy things that you try to do in order to deal with your stutter just to make other people comfortable. You do this, uh, ah. Uh. You do this, you blank your eyes a thousand times just to try to get the words out of your mouth. You go back and forth. You dance if you have to. Whatever it takes in order to get these damn words out of your mouth. Because you are too dumb to talk. And yes, it is awkward. It makes you feel crazy. And the most interesting part about it is that uh, you are doing all of this to make other people comfortable. Too dumb to talk, but not, uh, uh, I'm like, yet, uh, I'm like, it is still your responsibility in order to make other people comfortable with you. You have the challenge. You have the challenge, the struggle, but it's still your responsibility to make sure that others, like who are that privileged enough to not be too dumb to talk, don't feel uncomfortable. It happens on so many other issues when we're talking about uh, social justice, for instance. That poor person who is smelly, that little kid who can't sit still and is afraid uh, 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 simply because that uh, his or that brain chemicals uh, 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 sort of actually have been scrambled from the trauma of dodging violence in his home. But it is his responsibility to reach us. That's what we do. What happens too frequently is that difference, in fact, is not the problem. Difference has never been the problem. Difference only becomes disability when the privileged care more about their own comfort than equality. My trauma has manifested itself in this way. Like when I was a nine-year-old boy, April of 1982, my oldest brother, Muchi, killed a man, stabbed him 40, 50 times. We don't even know how many times I had, uh, I had, uh, I had, uh, I had uh, simply because it was that brutal. And that night, I was actually at my home asleep. But that night, that event changed my life forever. Because like before this, in fact, I I'm sort of actually had like this, uh, like this or that mild stutter. Yes, I had a little bit of problems with my speech, et cetera, before then. But after that. That's when I became too dumb to talk. Simply because my, uh, I'm gonna like, uh, simply because that like, trauma, uh, I'm sorry, like, manifest itself in incredible ways, in ways that most of us don't even think about. In fact, 25 years later, that I was like finally diagnosed with PTSD from that event from nine years old.
And the only reason that I found out uh, uh, I'm like, is because I had like, finally let my wife, Kelly, uh, 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 excuse me, Kelly, like, onto this really, really dark secret I had. Because I had, I had sort of actually been uh, like silently uh, struggling against these really, really violent images for years. And some of those violent images, including, uh, uh, they uh, I'm sort of uh, included me killing her and my kids. And I would have these images driving to work, and I'm a journalist, and I'm dealing with issues of, uh, of, of like violence and criminal justice, and I'm driving to work, and I'm literally trying to shake those images out of my brain as hard as I can. Until I finally told her the truth that I got help. All the way from something I had nothing to do with when I was a nine-year-old kid. Trauma manifests itself in all different kinds of ways. And also, golly, and also, it actually also brings great shame as well. For every single year of college, for instance, I never mentioned my oldest brother once. Not once. And I was actually writing about race issues in college and crime issues in college. And I was studying all of these things, but not once in my entire time in college did I mention my brother because that shame runs so deep that it can paralyze you. It can paralyze you. And I know that there are many other students right here today, right now, on campus, walking around the same way walking around with silent shame. Right now, they are afraid that one day that they will be found out, even if they did absolutely nothing wrong. And so essentially, yes, and so Ellie, I'm actually going to wrap it up this way. Yes, uh -huh. uh, because I need you to know something. There is a difference, by the way, between what we call sympathy or empathy. I had two teachers. Ms. Clark, in middle school, she took the sympathetic route for me. <clears throat> she actually heard my stutter. I couldn't get out two words back to back. And so, uh, so, uh, 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 so she said, listen, that uh, uh, I'm gonna, uh, 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 simply because Isaac would never ever be a public speaker, and so therefore, uh, uh, I'm like, we are not going to stress him out and like, actually have him do his verbal assignments in class. So like, she actually exempted me from all talking assignments out of sympathy. <clears throat> but I had another teacher, Ms. Shiver. who took the empathetic route. She, too, saw my stutter. She heard it as well. And this is what she did. Shortly before a verbal assignment began, she would actually pull me to the side quietly. And she 
And she would say, Isaac, that I'm like actually going to call on everybody else in order. But you, uh, um, uh, um, as soon as you're ready, just give me a signal and I will call on you right there. And it worked simply because uh, 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 she empathized with me, which means that she really understood what I was facing, but also that I understood what I might face later on. She understood that, yes, it's going to be hard as hell for you, but there's still junk you got to do. What she did was give me just a little bit of control. And that is the one thing that stuttering strips from you, is control. Simply because uh, uh, you can't even control your own mouth. But for her, she gave me just enough control. And uh, uh, like that actually sent a clear message that I was worthy. <laughs> that I was as good as everyone else. It was just that I had to do it just a little bit differently. At some point, at some point, I had, uh, I had, uh, I had, um, at least for everybody in this room, is gonna have to make a choice. Uh, Ellie, I had, uh, I had, uh, had, um, sort of like actually when it comes to their kids or their students between sympathy for them or having empathy for them. And I hope that you choose wisely. Thank you.